Um, okay, let's welcome two of my favorite people ever. Yes, it's Ross Marquand and it's Dan Fogler. Yes, it's you. There you are. Hello. Jesus. <laughs> Hello. That song is awesome. Yeah, that was what, that was epic. What song was that? It's just it was just your Walking Dead theme, wasn't oh, it? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, just like yeah, the last one where we got Billy Zane on, he, he walked onto Celine Dion. That was quite special. It's very emotional. Um, Okay, so the, like, just to start, I mean, the last episodes have started going out now. How does it feel to sort of finally get those out? Now you're on the, the road to the end. Ross? It's, it's weird, yeah. I mean, uh, we, we were filming that last season for 15 months, which is very unheard of. Like, most, most TV shoots, like, even for a full season, it's like seven to ten months tops. And I've never heard of a show going for 15 months consecutively. Uh, we kept having to stop and start for COVID and protocols and everything, but uh, we got it in the bag and it's it's good to be done with it. I mean, I think we're we're very excited for people to see it. Is what I mean, you know. So yeah. it's gonna be great. Yeah, it'll be good. Um, both of you have learned a lot of skills uh, in your time on set, like so riding horses. I remember Dan saying that he's he rode horses, shooting arrows. Is there anything that you learned? that you didn't realize you were going to be really good at? Like a skill that you ended up being shit hot at, basically. <laughs> shit hot. Ross, what about you? Yeah, like shit hot. Shit hot. That's a great, is that a Scottish phrase? It's my phrase. It's nice. It is. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just thinking about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, riding horses one-handed, because I, I, I'd never ridden a horse before. Yeah, of course. And I can't use this hand, so that was a fun you know, learning how to steer with like two fingers. It was, it was quite a trick, but wow. I got good at it. it how fun. fast could you go on a horse? Pretty fast. You, you went faster than me. I've seen you go. No, no, oh, not your stunt double. I, not on purpose. Oh, okay. <laughs> As I, cut, I, yeah. I think I remember a vision of you, you and Callan going tearing ass like super That was fast. my stunt double. That was a stunt double? Stunt double. Oh, I thought it was you. Shit. Okay. Yeah. What about you? What were you really good at? I'm what good, were you shit hot at, Dan? I was shit hot at <laughs> doing like a trot. Oh. Any faster than that on the horse, I was just like, God, what that bad? Like, I was like, hurt myself and fall off. Uh, yeah. And, and bone arrows, God, just really therapeutic, you know? It's like very, mm -hmm. uh, you know, meditative. Just, you got to, the whole breathing with it. And, and um, yeah, I, I, I didn't, know, like the same thing with horses, you know, you mm -hmm. got to be like really calm in order to shoot arrows and to ride horses, you know? Did you never notice that? Yeah. So kind of getting to your like zen space? Yeah, kind of although like, so there was that episode, it was in season 10, it's like the finale and, and the, um, the hordes following us and we're, we have that little caravan with all the music playing yep. and they're following us. The talking heads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out. Yeah. Um, so we're playing that song, and I got my arrows, you know, and I'm like, ooh, I get to use my arrows. <laughs> and on the show, if you look closely, you see me, like, I'm in the corner. I get to, like, shoot two arrows, and then I turn and run, and then all of the arrows just fall out of my quiver, or whatever it's called. Just gone. I don't need those anymore. They just <laughs> fall out, and I'm just running, not even realizing they're falling out. Um, what were, is, I mean, you know, you, you spend your, a lot of your time in The Walking Dead, like, doing all these things, covered in crap, you know, like, pretty much <laughs> covered in crap and doing these things. That's the technical term for being an actor. Um, so what, you know, were some of your hardest days on set that you remember, oh, my God, that was really tough, really testing? Wow. We did, we did uh, the season nine opener, or season 10, I can't remember. It was, oh, no, it was 10. Um, where we're get, get ready to fight the whispers, and yeah, we had Jekyll to to Island. Jekyll yeah. Island, Jesus! If you ever get a chance to go to Jekyll Island, Georgia, don't. As it's the hottest place I've ever experienced in my life. Like white sand beaches, not a single cloud in the sky. It was a hundred degrees 
all three days, and then the third day was like 100 percent humidity. So you just had this sun reflecting off, and we had all these layers of clothes that were marching over and over again. I think by the end of the first day, most of us were so sunburnt and you know killed from heat exhaustion. We we're like we could barely speak. It was nuts. But I mean, aside from that, like. There's lots of grueling days on the show, but that was probably the most like intense, I'd say, you know. Mm. Yeah. What were you done? Similar or like you got any kind of hard to stays on set sort of stories? Me? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it did. always uh, it, it always involves it always involves the heat. Mm. You know. Like Jekyll Island was so incredibly hot and I'm just like like I, and I'm wearing a blazer, you know, and I'm just like this was a smart choice for the winter, you know. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, and then, but um, the first day that we were introduced, basically, um, where uh, what's her name, the kid, uh, Judith. Judith. Judith, where Judith saves us uh, from the horde, and um, that day was intense. We had Greg Nicotero was directing. It was my first day on set. Um, <laughs> Uh, Nadia and Eleanor, who play Yumiko and Magna, they never sweat. And I look over at them, and they're just sweating like crazy. And I'm like, okay, it's hot out. You know? I was like, and then uh, and we were just, oh, man. And, but, and then it's just like, okay, action, and you got to act. You're screaming your braids out. Oh, my God, we're all going to die. You know, s sorry. Smashing, you know, the, the walkers and, and just like, just like, you turn the dial up to 110, you know, uh, to match the temperature. And, um, yeah, that was a, I, I, I thought like, okay, okay, I guess I can, I guess if every day is going to be like this, I, I can do it. I, I, you know, I felt like I was like, I was like, this is, this is intense, you know. Um, but every day wasn't like that. We had some calm days, obviously. And then we shoot into the winter and it gets cold and that's nice. I like when we're shooting in the winter. Love shooting in the winter. Yeah. yeah. So there's been a lot of uh, glorious deaths or horrible deaths um, on The Walking Dead. But if you had to go out in a blaze of glory, like how would you want to be killed? I, I want to die in the most hilarious and stupid way possible. I really want it to be like a thing where he finds a penny and he goes, oh, a penny. And then he like steps on a rake into or and something. a rake <laughs> knocks him back and he goes, whoa, and he falls off a cliff. I want it to be the dumbest, most, you know. <laughs> idiotic way to die. I, I don't want it to be cool. I don't want it to be a cool heroic death. The way Daryl dies in this season, though, you're going to love. It's amazing. He dies so good, you guys. It's the best, best death in, in movie history, believe me. You're going to love the way he dies. Oh God, no. He dies so good. Oh, God, no. You couldn't oh believe how good he dies. He dies incredibly well. Okay? You're going to love it. You're going to love it. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about you, Dan? Like, how would you go out? How would you want to, want to go out? I want to go out uh, in a blaze of glory, uh, singing that song. Excellent. From Bon yes. Jovi. Yes. Going out in a blaze of glory, just singing. <laughs> Just, and it's like I'm like, up, and, and all the walkers are like attracted to me. I'm like, I'm like, run, run! I'm going out, and I'm like playing the guitar. Like and half then, uh, your body's missing. You're still like <laughs> half uh. my body. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I'd love to see it. I'm hoping for that now. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, you, if the zombie apocalypse started tomorrow, do you think? Think about who you are now as people. Do you think you would change? Would you change? Would you step up and become a leader? Would you? run away and become a recluse? Like, would you change, genuinely, Ross? I'd probably become a recluse, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'm already pretty reclusive. I live in a cabin in the woods, so like, it doesn't get much more reclusive than that. So, yeah, I'd probably be even more, I'll be like hyper reclusive, which will be fun. I'll put a moat around me, you know, drawbridge and everything, I'm like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds nice, that's yeah, good. Sorry, yes. yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> leave everybody, yeah, yeah. Get a bunch Bug of canned goods, yeah. Yeah, bugger it. Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah, why not? This is nice. Yeah. What about you, yeah. Dan? I was in, I was in London during uh, lockdown, and um, and I didn't know we didn't know what the hell was gonna happen. So I was getting ready for whatever. I was like, is it the end of the world? <laughs> you know. So I was like, what can I use as weapons? I was like <laughs> sharpening broom handles in my house and stuff, and uh, and. <laughs> And like making booby traps. 
And you know what I did? I got so many fireworks. I was just like, if anyone comes to my house trying to eat me and my family, you're, they're going to get a face full of fireworks. For real? Oh, yeah. You, wow. Oh, yeah. You're really tooling up there. I would tool up, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I'm coming to your house okay. if the apocalypse happens, because I'm useless and I have no to I would go to Chris Pratt's house. Okay. He seems like he knows what's up. He knows yeah, how to survive. He seems capable. Yeah. Capable, yes. Yeah, I felt that way Are when I first met him. Mario? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about that. That's what I know Chris Pratt <laughs> yes, for. Mar- no, he's no longer Bob Hoskins. He's <laughs> Bob Hoskins. Do you like, did you, do you remember that movie? I love that yeah. movie. I love that too. John Leguizamo. Dennis Hopper was Bowser, I think, yeah. right? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great movie. Are you kidding me? And Yoshi was an actual dinosaur. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It was such a yeah. good film. That um, was a trippy movie. <laughs> Who's seen Super Mario Brothers from 1992? Nice. Wow. All that's right, a lot great. of people. Nice. That's amazing. It's actually, nice. actually decent. Good. Great um, audience. Yeah, yeah. You're both real nerds. I know this. You're real nerds. Actual nerds. So when I was younger, so my nerdiest claim to fame was... You're a real nerd, too. You're a real nerd. Hi, I'm also real. Hi. It's like Nerds Anonymous here. Hi, I'm You're all real nerds. Hi, I'm Claire, and I'm a real Everyone's a real, real nerd. nerd here. Hi, I'm, hi there. I'm Claire, I'm a real nerd. Oh, yes. Um, when I was younger, I wrote to the editor of Marvel. It was like the, the 30th anniversary of, of Spider-Man. So it's like this was in the 90s, early 90s. And he sent me badges, and he wrote a little thing. And like, I was obsessed with stationery. He sent me like, lots of Spider-Man stuff. What's your, like, nerdiest claim to favor? The nerdiest thing that you did when you were a kid? Oh, wow. Yeah. Can you beat getting a badge from the editor of Marvel? I, I used to make stop frame animation with oh. my Legos, with my brothers and I. So, like, I don't know if you guys know wow. stop frame animation, but it's where you basically move the slightest little bit, ever, and you record that each moment. It's very jerky and not very good animation, if you want to call it that. But we had a lot of time on our hands and our dad's camcorder, and we made a lot of those. And it was a lot of work for like 15 seconds of video. But I think that's probably looking back one of the nerdier things I've done in my life. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty nerdy. Pretty nerdy. It's pretty, also pretty cool. Yeah. And what about you, Dan? I mean, I, yeah, that's really nerdy. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I. Uh, the nerdiest thing I ever did was watch Revenge of the Nerds on a loop (laughs) (laughs) while playing Dungeons and Dragons. Hell yeah, Uh uh-huh. Wearing um, Star Wars armor. Excellent. Excellent. I do that every... Honey, I do that every weekend, right? (laughs) That's my wife, everybody. She knows what's up. She's like, "Mm -hmm." She's sitting in a Star Wars chair right now. Actually, I need to change my answer. I think the nerdiest thing I did okay. was I wrote a musical version of Tron. Oh, yes. In college. And yes. I put it up. It's, it's seven or eight original songs. It's an hour and a half long. I want to write it. Would you guys want to see a musical version of Tron? Yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to ask Disney if it's cool. Because <laughs> they own it. They own everything. <laughs> well, you know. Okay. Since it's a, yes, it's a Walking Dead panel and it's Halloween season... You're right there, Dan. <laughs> Good. Um, I wanted to ask you about horror movies. You horror fans? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What kind of like horror films did you watch growing up? Oh, yeah. yeah, Ross, what were you? Or Dan? Go for it. Yeah. Go- <laughs> who do you want? Who do you want to talk? You're talking now. Let's okay, go I'll you. talk. <laughs> um, the very first Frankenstein, the black and white one, oh. scared the crap out of me. Uh, and I was only like. I was, I was young. I was like five. And I shouldn't have watched that. And then I graduated to Stephen King movies. Yes. Cujo. Yes. Cujo really scared the hell out of me growing up um, because there were a lot of stray dogs in my neighborhood. So any one of those dogs could be a potential Cujo. Potential Cujo. Uh, There's a sequel, Potential Cujo. That's a good (laughs) band name, Potential Cujo. We're Potential Cujo. And then you just play folk music. (laughs) Just like really (laughs) slow. But any moment, they could get unhinged and play metal, you know? Yeah, any moment. They could just, just a hint of a riff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just a hint. Potential, a potential riff. Potential Cujo. Potential Cujo. Jaws. Jaws. Jaws, yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay, what about you, Ross? I was always a, a big fan of The Shining when I saw that. I, oh, yeah. I, Shining's my, my favorite. So it's the best horror movie in my opinion, but like, 
my buddy had an older brother who gave us got us a, a bootleg copy, and we watched that at like 12 years old at my buddy's house. That we had a sleepover, and I don't think any of us slept that night. That movie just got in our heads, you know, like big time. But especially the scene where Jack like he, he like comes he comes into the bathroom and he and he's like looking <laughs> at that woman in the shower and he's like. Whoa. Who are you? And he's just like <laughs> the way he, he looks insane. It's yeah. like genuinely looks like yeah. an insane person in that movie. And I thought that's that's what I want to do. You know, I want to I want to scare the shit out of people like that, like mm. that guy. You know, okay. did I scare you guys? <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Then um, I did my job. You're both into comics as well. Uh, we have to talk about comics because we're at Comic Con. I don't think we talk about comics enough yeah. when I'm on panels. So I wanted to ask you for recommendations. What what's one comic? I'm gonna, I'll start first. I'll say, Why the Last Man? You gotta read Why the Last Man. Very, very good series. Okay, and, and also, sorry, Saga. Also I was gonna good. say that. Where are you? That's what I was gonna say. Oh, sorry, I mean, not Saga. Ross, what would you recommend? I'm say Saga, shit. Have you guys read Saga? Oh. No? Wow. Oh, oh my God. Okay. That's Apparently good stuff. Apparently they're gonna make it into a movie. Which are they? Which I have very strong feelings about. I don't think they should. Are this animated or it's gonna be live, live action? action. Oh, live, live action. action. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't know. know about that. Okay. But right. that's amazing. If you get a chance, this this book is easily, I think, the best comic book maybe ever written. Saga. Yeah, it's great. So yeah, if you get a chance. Yeah, if you have yeah. kids, you know, or if you're part of a family, it'll you'll turn a page and you'll be like, oh my god, I'm getting misty here. Like, <laughs> I, I can't believe it. Um, what would you recommend, Dan? You got one or two. A hundred bullets. Right. Um, that's like my favorite team up: Eduardo Riso and Brian Azzarello. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also like East of West. That's so that good. That's really awesome. Uh-huh. Um, they should make an anime sh- anime out of that at some point. Uh, yeah. I mean, yes. I'm going to throw in a few. Yeah. You should read Brooklyn Gladiator oh. by Dan Fogler. Yes, I write that. And I also Moon Lake. Yeah, I got a bunch of books with Heavy Metal Magazine. I got them at my table if you guys want to check them out. Um, Moon Lake, we're turning into an animated series. Um, this guy's going to do a couple thousand voices in it, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, it's, it's going to have a great cast once we uh, sell it. And um, Brooklyn Gladiator, we're going to make that into a film at some point. Fish Kill is the prequel to that. They're all with Heavy Metal Magazine. You guys, you guys familiar with Heavy Metal Magazine? Kind of? Sir? Okay, then. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's me. Cool. So you talked about some of your projects. That's what I was going to ask next. Like, can you talk about anything coming up? I know like, it's, it's always NDA land, but like, can you say anything? Uh, stuff the, you're doing? We just finished season two of Invincible, and we're starting season three now. I don't know if you guys have seen Invincible or not, but holy crap, that's a good... I mean, it's, it, it, who has seen The Boys? Who's seen The Boys? It's kind of like an animated version of that. It's, it's very... It's, it's amazing. So if you get a chance, watch that. And uh, there's another project I'm working on that I can't talk about, but it might be the, th- the thing I'm most excited about in my life. Okay. Honestly, All right. it's, it's... Yeah, fun. So watch this piece. And please watch Invincible. It's very good. So... I've got a little game to play before we... Uh, if you've got fan questions, start queuing up at this microphone right there. Oh! You're like, yeah, let's go. Just queue up and then I'll, I'll signal to you in a second. So we're going to play a game. Okay. It's called... I've just called it really... I've just called it impression off. There you go. So I'm going to give you a scenario, each of you, a different scenario, and a voice. Okay? And you've got to do it as that character, as that person. So the first one's Christopher Walken. You're both going to do Christopher Walken. So let's start with you, Dan. Christopher Walken keeps falling off his horse. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. <laughs> Christopher Walken keeps falling off his horse. It, it, wow. Hey. Slow down. Come on. Come on. What am I supposed to do? Click my teeth at you. <laughs> Hey, little horse. Ooh, it bucked me. <laughs> How do you do that? Ow! <laughs> that was an excellent round of applause. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, you're both going to hate me by the end of this. Christopher Walken can't shoot a bow and arrow. You guys, 
the string. It's too strong. I can't pull it back. I'm a dancer. I'm not a bow and arrow man. I'm more of a finesse guy, you know. I feel like I could dance around the zombies. I don't want to do a bow and arrow. It seems hard. <laughs> That's right. Round All right. Okay, the next one's Al Pacino. You're both going to Al Pacino. Okay, so Pacino, campaigning for leadership in the new world. That's yours. Oh, yes. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> Al Pacino, campaigning for leadership in the new world? In the new world. Oh. <laughs> got some bad leaders lately. Some of these leaders got their head up the ass. <laughs> Does that even sound like him? Okay. Oh. First thing I don't do. First thing everyone gets is a cappuccino. Everyone gets a cappuccino. Everyone needs a kick in the ass. Round of applause, round of applause. Okay. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Ross. That was the craziest Pacino I've ever done. That was great. That was unhinged. That was unhinged great. Pacino. It was a very physical performance, Dan. Oh. Physical. How do you do oh. How do you do <laughs> You can't do that sitting oh. down. Okay, yours is Pacino. About to be taken over by the horde. Okay, here's what's going to happen. <laughs> You're going to turn right the hell around and bite your own ass. I don't want to get bit, okay? I'm very tired. It's been a long day. No. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like more like Kurt, that. Sounds like Oscar the Grouch. I feel like. Round of applause for Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, last two. <laughs> this is it. So one for you, one for you. Okay, this is the random one I'm giving you because you did this for me recently, Dan. Shrek. <laughs> I only know how to say one word. Shrek's first kill. It's first kill. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is horrendous. I only know how to say one word. Okay, here we go. Donkey! That was terrible! Donkey! What's all? I can't, I can't do it now! That's fine. You're killing the donkey. It counts. It's uh, fine. Donkey's deed. Donkey's deed. What's wrong with your donkey? That's terrible. <laughs> That's, That's actually, horrendous. It's good, it's good. <laughs> and I'm after the end now. Do you have a do you have a Mel Gibson? Because yeah. that's an authentic Scots accent, that's, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I know. Can do, I can do something from Braveheart. Go for it. Okay, you ready? Right, yeah, we're ready. You guys have seen Braveheart. Yeah. All right, check this out. What, this, is, this, is my, this is one of my favorite parts of Braveheart. You ready? Here we go. Long time ago, I wonder that. I held bottom of a lunch. And you know it well. Thank you. <laughs> so good. Okay, last one. This is it. And you know it well. And you know it well. And you know it well. Don't worry, you're not doing Shrek. Oh, great, great. <laughs> like, I can What's see the wrong, mild donkey? fear in your eyes. Come on. I want you to do, and you can do, actually, no, 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 Trump, negotiating no, for no. his life with a zombie. Okay, here's the deal. You, my friend, are a decrepit, disgusting monster. I want nothing to do with you. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to build a wall around you. <laughs> you had your chance. It's, it's going to be the greatest wall Time you've ever seen. Get out of here. A giant, giant wall between you and me, and you'll never bite me as long as you live or die. I don't know what you are. Are you living? Are you dead? I don't even know. You're very bizarre to me. I want you to leave. The wall is up. Oh. Goodbye, friend. Okay? Smack him in the Oh my god. My, rib, my ribs hurt. Oh my god, I've, I've actually, my ribs hurt. Um, they have dissolved into my body. I have no ribs left. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to fan questions. Hello, my love. Please step up. What is your name and what is your question? Uh, my name is Lizzie. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Welcome to Scotland. Um, first question is uh, Walking Dead's a pretty intense environment, I can imagine, to work on. Um, how do you keep yourself um, entertained behind the scenes? Doing this, this where we, we do we do impressions. Wait, how do we make? How do we keep ourselves entertained? Like lightly entertained because it's yeah, quite in between intense the intensity. Environment. The material's quite intense, so while 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 on the show. Yeah, while whilst you're on the show, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah when I, when I first got on the show. And I was surrounded, like at nighttime, in between takes, by all the all the zombies are just standing around there. And I'd have to check in with them, you know. I'd have to be like, "Hey guys, um, 
what did you think of that sports game we just watched? You know, and then and did you see them just be like, oh yeah, you know, it's cool. And then they become human again. You, you see them like leaning and smoking a cigarette or something. I would need to see them be human because just seeing them standing there swaying in the darkness is very unnerving. When I first came on set, yeah. You do get used to it after a while, but we used to, like when, this is before, I guess you got on, but we used to play this game called Heads Up. Yeah. Where you, yeah, where you had to like guess catchphrases and names of celebrities. It was a great game. We, but you know, like a lot of times we just joke around on set. Like it, it's a very dark show, as you pointed out. And if we don't crack jokes in between, or hear Callan, uh, who played Aiden, or Alden, sorry, um, sing amazing songs, and, sh and Seth, you know, unfortunately couldn't be here uh, as Father Gabriel. Like, he's one of the best singers I've ever heard in my life, and it's just, we keep it pretty loose there, you know, you kind of have to. Yeah. Otherwise, people get injured and sad, and it's a depressing show, you know, so, yeah. Thank you for that question. Can I ask one more quickly? Uh, we can, I'm afraid. That's okay. I'm sorry, but thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Hey, um, everybody uh, asking, hey, miss, come back here. So, you ask a question. You get this, and uh, you come to the table, and I'll sign it for free, and he'll sign it for free, too. Cool. All right. Thanks, my love. Thank you. Hello, friend. What's your name, and what's your question? Um, so my name's Georgie. Hi. I, I just want to know, this is inspired by Dan getting his um, wand in the last sequence of Dumbledore. Yeah. And I just wanted to know, what's the best thing that you've stolen off set, be it a prop or a bit of scenery? I haven't stolen anything. They, they don't allow you. But um, uh, Colleen Atwood would let me keep my socks, which was lovely. I stole a, I stole a, I stole a jacket off The Walking Dead. I have that. I'm going to wear that for Halloween. Uh, but no, but the Harry Potter movies are very, very tight with security, with stealing things. So, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, to Dan's point, like they're very hardcore about locking up this stuff because it's going to be, you know, potentially like a museum piece someday or whatnot. Um, it's going to be here, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, but the funny thing about the trucks that they transport those things in, the latches on the back of the, 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 the truck are, are really flimsy, and a lot of times they come undone. And I was driving home one day and I saw my mace arm in the middle of the street. <laughs> And I was like, oh, man, I don't know how this got here, but someone could run over. Or and I just said it would be a sin to leave it in the middle of the street, of course. So I, yeah, I, I stole my arm. I, I definitely stole the arm. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> what? They don't deserve it. I, I, like, messed up my back wearing that damn thing. It was heavy as hell. I, I'm like, that's mine. That's my, my thing. That's yeah. for you. Thank, Thank you very much. You're Thanks welcome. for the question. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Hello, my dear. What's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name's Emma. Um, I was Hi. just wondering... What's the funniest mistake that's happened on set? Funniest mistake? Oh. Hiring me. <laughs> I mean, I always think, it, you, you saw the first Fantastic Beast movie? No, <laughs> okay, you're talking about The Walking Dead. Oh, okay. What's the, what's the, oh, I got something crazy I did. So, um, so this is what I did. It was season 10, and we're up against the whispers, and it's, you know, all of us in that scene where it's like a, they're up against the, um, the like, we put this, like, electric fence, basically, and they're stuck, stuck up against the fence. And we're smashing all the walkers. And they were just like, just keep smashing. Just keep smashing until we say cut. And uh, so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to choose, because we had, like, some... Uh, mannequins in there that were dummy, you know, they were dummy zombies as well. So I was like, I, I'm just going to hit this dummy in front of me and until they sell, yell cut. So I'm just smashing. And I had, it was like, it wasn't like a metal thing. I had a, like a rubber version of my weapon. And I'm like hitting this, what I think is a, a, a dummy in the butt over and over again. Wham! I'm hitting this dummy in the butt. And then they yell cut. And I was like, whoa, man, my arms are tired. And then the dummy gets up and goes, awesome, dude. And I was like, oh, my God. And he was like, I dug that. You know, I was like, okay. He enjoyed himself. So that was the craziest thing that ever happened to me. I was like, I thought that was a dummy. 
Yeah. Um, you anything to add, Ross? Or, or can you top the dummy? The no, dummy I don't story? think I can. I mean, jeez. Uh, there was a scene in season six where I'm helping Maggie try to find uh, Glenn because he's gone missing. And uh, this, the, the, it was in the sewer. We were like trapped in the sewer and like I fall down in the sewage. And uh, like they did such a good job of recreating the poo. Like it was, oh. they got a bunch of Snickers bars and ground them up in a blender and then like put oatmeal and it was just disgusting in there. It was just, anyway. This poo walker couldn't see because they got the when they get the contacts on, they they can't see for anything. And I at the time had really terrible vision too, but I, until I got LASIK done. And then like being dark and everything, he was supposed to crawl up and, and, and scratch me, but I couldn't see where he was. And I turned around and he was swatting up my face, and I was like, no, no. But he was like literally two feet away from me over here, and I was like, there, there. And, and I was like, oh shit, you're over there, like. It, it, we, we have some weird moments on the show, yeah. But I can't top the, the butt stuff. I mean, <laughs> not, you know what I mean? Butt stuff. Butt, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Thanks. Thank you. Come and get your, your picture. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, great t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Yes. What a film. What's your name and what's your question? Lost Boys. Um, my name's Melissa. Um, I'm just wondering, you know how you've got quite a lot of deaths, obviously, and a lot of them, as fans, get you really... Like really upset and crying, like especially Sophia and Carol. Is there any that have really hit you that you've actually went home and been still been thinking about it? Yeah, when Daryl died, you know. Um, <laughs> just, it really got us here and here, you know. It was a gut thing and then it was a heart thing too. And I just started to cry a lot. It was sad, yeah. No You're going to love the episode though, it's great. It's aliens. The whole time it was aliens, you guys. That's where the zombies <laughs> yeah. came from. Alien was, virus, isn't that wild? He was like pointing, and he was pointing too hard, and and he gets he get like, hey man, and he got like his hand stuck in a, a, a horde, and the horde pulled him in. It was really uh, horrendous. <laughs> You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Yeah. Thank you very much. You thank accept you. that answer? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Come and get your, come and get your picture. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm being Hello a smart there. ass. <laughs> what, is your, uh, what is your name, and what is your question? Okay, so my name's Faye, and Hi. it's mainly aimed at Dan. So as you do Fantastic Beasts and The Walking Dead alongside each other, how do you adapt your acting skills? Because obviously two completely different characters, two completely different genres. Yeah, it's like, the uh, how do I adapt? Well, well, I went to acting school and, and they taught us <laughs> how to do that stuff at acting school. But um, yeah, I always try to find something in the character that is close to to my heart and, and is close to me. And I go, okay, that guy, that, I, I can latch on to that. And I always try to start the characters that I create or start the characters that I play from a place of um, something that's familiar to me um, and grow it out of that. So it's kind of easy to adapt that way once you land on a set and uh, you just build the character out of that. But I also have like a thing where it's like the, the grass is always greener, where while I'm on the Fantastic Beast set, I'm like, wow, I wish I was always halfway through. I'm like, man, I'd love to be doing like a, you know, something outdoors right now. And um, so they both would fulfill that, you know, that purpose. It's pretty great. You want to you wanna post it? Thank you very much for your question. Thank there you. you go. Hello, sir. Hi, great top. Thank so, you. Hello what's, again. What's your name? What's your question? Um, I'm Dave. Uh, somebody already asked my question, so I had to come up with one while anxiously waiting in the queue. Good for you, pal. Um, so my question is, uh, Ross, um, I know that you were in the MCU uh, doing the Red Skull role. Um, if either of you could play a big role in the MCU, like a big character, who would it be and why? An existing character, or do you want them to choose any character? A anyone? Oh, well, there you go. That's a fun question. Go for it. What, who would you play? I'd love to play The Thing. Oh. You know, in uh, yeah. Fantastic Four. Uh, just CGI the hell out of that, you know? Do it with, like, a clobbering time, you know? Like, that, get, like, real into the, the Brooklyn-y, gravelly accent. I'd really enjoy that. Cool. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ross? I, I always used to say Wolverine or Moon Knight. Because Moon Knight, as a Moon kid, Knight, yeah. Wolverine and Moon Knight were my two favorite superheroes. Really? Yep. Especially when Moon Knight started to go, like, in the early 2000s, they really went into his dissociative identity disorder stuff, and that was like, that was, 
that was a great run. The the uh, Warren Ellis, I think, was a writer, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, but after Hugh Jackman played Wolverine so well, and Oscar yeah. did him so well, obviously, I think I wouldn't want to touch those. But Morph, for me as a kid, was always just as X cool. Factor. Yeah. yeah. Morph oh, was X just, Factor. He was neat, and I think. Yeah. Being impressionist, it would be fun to play characters that you'd have to really speak like the other actors that you're working with. I think that'd be a fun challenge, you know? Cool. Good yeah. question. Awesome. Thank you. That was a great question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come get your picture. Come Thank up to you. the mic, my dear. Yeah, come to the table and get it signed. See you later. Right, speak up. Uh, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name's Alicia. Hi. Nice to meet you. It was just to ask, let's have a bit of a random question, but... If you had to have a movie play for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, like in the background, or the way we like, only watch like on a desert island? You have to watch it over and oh, over and that's over a good again. Question. Die Hard. Oh, oh, good choice. Yeah, I mean, it's, my, it's the I think it's the best action good movie Christmas ever made. Christmas movie. Yeah, yep, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think that that and 2001 are my guilty. Like I, I have to watch Die Hard every time it's on. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Dan. I was gonna say Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> Um, but now that you say Kubrick, ooh, yeah, something beautiful like 2001 would be lovely to watch over and over. Um, yeah, yeah. Something easy to watch. <laughs> well, no, yeah, well, yeah, something easy on the eyes, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very hey, much. Thank you. thank you. Cheers. Thank you. I used to watch Encino Man over and over oh, and over again like that. I had that in VHS. How can you take that much Polly Shore? That's a <laughs> lot of Polly Shore. Hello there, friend. What's your name and what's your question? Um, my name's Sam, and what's your favorite iconic Walking Dead weapon? Oh, oh. favorite weapon. All right. I mean, I, I think I'm a pretty big fan of the mace arm, if I'm being honest. It's just fun. It, it'd be fun to just like spin around like a whirling dervish and just knock out people that way, you know? Yeah. It's a nice way to kill people, yeah. What was yours? How about you? I was a huge fan of my, my weapon that they gave me. My smasher made out of motorcycle gears. Yeah. That was really cool, man. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> um, I was a fan of Negan from the comic book. Yeah. So that bat is pretty iconic. Yeah, what about you? What's your favorite? Um, probably Negan's bat. Yeah, the bat. Yeah. We got any Negans around here? Any bats or anything? I oh. saw some earlier. There he is, oh. right front row. There we go. Excellent. I oh, yeah, just the bat went up, yes. Um, come get your picture, my friend. Here you go. There you go. Thank you. Thanks. We've got time for a couple more, so yeah, yeah. please come up. Hello again. Hello there. Hi. What's your name? My What's name's Emma. Hi, Emma. And my question is for both of you. What was it like working with Norman Reedus on the set every day? He's a, uh, well, you know, he dies in the show, of course. I'm sorry. I, lo I love seeing the reaction of people who are just like, I, he keeps joking about it. I think he's serious. No, he's got his own spinoff. No, it's great. I mean, like, Norman's like, listen, the guy's been in a million things, and he's always, like, the master of cool, oh, yeah. you know? And uh, I feel like, you know, he, he, he's, he's so understated with how he acts, you know? Yeah. When, you, when you watch what he does... And, it's, and it's, it's beautiful to see him just have so much confidence in that yeah. character and really, it, it translates to the screen yeah, really grown, well. Daryl has grown all the time from season one to now. Yeah. He has changed so much. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. He's brought like a whole entire new just context to the show and to his role. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to add anything, Dan? Yeah, I know. I mean, I know, I know Norman um, before he was on the show. And... Um, when he, you know, we were both struggling New York actors and just trying to, to get into stuff. And um, when I saw him on the show, I was like, yeah, dude, that's great. And then he just, you know, he was only supposed to be there for like a couple seasons, right? Like one or one season. And he's still there, you know, and he's, and he's just created this iconic character. Um, yeah, man, he's, it's, uh, he's a badass. He oh. is. I can agree with that one. <laughs> yeah. well, thank you for answering my question. Thank you for your question. There you go. Okay, we've got Whoop. time for one more. Everyone else thank have you. to sit. You can come up, please. And then I'm sorry. Everyone else have to sit down. I'm on strict schedule. Everyone else goes back to their seats. I'm so sorry. But oh. these guys are around all weekend. So please go and see them. And please make sure you can ask your question to them personally over the weekend. Okay, sorry. What's your name? So, hello, your my name's Steve. It's a pleasure to meet both of you today. Thank you for being here. 
Um, my question is to both of you. Um, is What's the process of... The Walking Dead was shot on film originally, and then during the course of the pandemic, you switched to digital. Is there a difference in the process of the filmmaking, if any? Can you talk about that? It's a lot faster, I'll tell you that. Because um, like we, we would have guys, you have to take the film and uh, get it in a, like a, a light-sensitive box so you can change out the film and make sure it's all wound properly. Um, I personally love the way it looked. It was had that grainy, beautiful, like old time look. And uh, I, I will say though, I was worried when it when they switched to digital. But I've been watching some of the episodes this year, and I'm like, damn, this looks really good. Like it's it's amazing how much how much more uh, information can be picked up with digital, right? Everything looks very clean. All the, the blacks are very black. All the reds are super red. And it's just it just yeah. you can, you can change so much after the fact. And with film, it's like what you see is what you get, basically. So um, I like them both, but do you have a preference? What do you think? I mean, I, I, I love shooting on film. That was just so, like, so classic um, because no one does anymore. You know, it's, it's uh, but the reason they did it, did it because... Dun, 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 dun. Or two. Sorry, I, I was like a Pavlovian response anytime I hear that music. Radio, where could he be? Where could he be? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, but you know, you gotta go. You gotta move with the times, and I, I think it still looks pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you, you very much. Great round of applause for everyone who asked the question. Hey, you want this? Come and grab that. Thank you very much, you Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, guys, Ross and Dan, as I mentioned, are here all weekend. So if you've not seen them already, go and say hello and check out their tables just in the other hall. Um, Ross, Dan, you've been amazing.